I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and today is a really cold, rainy day. It's pretty terrible outside. Sorry. And so today I thought I would answer a question that I've had a few times, and that was if I could give a tour of all these cars that are up on the shelves behind me. I haven't given a tour of those cars yet, so that's what we're gonna do today. Probably the number one question I get asked about them is how do I get them up there? And I do that using this Toyota fork truck. This fork truck has a 5,000 pound capacity, which is plenty for anything that I would be attempting to lift and put up on the shelf. It is powered by propane and it's perfect for this use. First vehicle up there is an old Willys Jeep called Little Red. The SAFD on the back of it, that stands for South Amana Fire Department. And that's a small town that's near here. Basically, I use that body for storing all of the used Willys Jeep parts that I have. Anything that I think I should save off of a Willys Jeep, I throw it up there. I think I have restored four of these now, so any extra parts or anything that I didn't think needed to go to the dump, I put it up there, just in case someday I might find a use for it. Below the Willys is an Austin America. This one is a 1969. It does have a manual transmission. This car had gone through a restoration at one time, and the engine in it doesn't have very many miles on it. The local British car mechanic had built this car for his daughter, and shortly after giving it to her, she wrecked it. So you can see the front of the car has seen better days. He did tear down quite a few Austin Americas. I have a lot of engines here for Austin Americas, and I do have another grill, uh, maybe another bumper. I do have a lot of parts for this and they're all sitting inside the car in case I wanted to do something with it someday. I don't know if that day will ever come. Maybe I'll just take the engine out of it and put it in another mini derivative. And those who don't know, this is a special version of the Morris 1100 that was made for the American market. And both of those cars can be thought of as a long wheelbase classic mini. Below the Austin America, hiding underneath all this stuff is an MGB. This is a rubber bumper era MGB. I bought this car with the intentions of putting it back together someday. Now it just houses a lot of MGB parts. As you can see, I have a bunch of brand new MGB panels and other parts from several different cars all piled on top here. Behind the MGB is a Mark I Austin Healey Sprite. This is not a new paint job on this car, but this car has not been on the road since it was painted. The final assembly has never been finished on it, so it's just waiting here, waiting to get reassembled. I think this car has been painted for about 15 years now. I know that the car had an accident. It had been bumped in the back after it was painted, um, and then so the back end had to be repainted again. You can see it doesn't quite match the doors there or the rest of the car, so whoever fixed the back end of this car and then repainted it, didn't do a very good job of getting everything to match here. Above the Sprite is another rubber bumper era MGB. This is also a car that I'm never going to restore. It just houses a ton of MGB parts. Although I do have crates and crates of MGB parts up on the shelves. Sometimes it's easier just to throw the parts into one of these MGBs that's sitting here on the shelf. And that way it's a little easy to look through it and I know where the parts are. Above the MGB is a DKW estate that I featured a video on. It's kind of funny, originally this video didn't get a whole lot of views, but within the last uh, month or so, it's been a year since I did that video, and it's been gaining a lot in popularity over the last month, so that is a car that maybe I will get back to and do some more work on. Behind the DKW is an Innocenti Spider S. This car does run and drive. I just don't have room for it down here. I was planning this winter on restoring this car and restoring another Innocenti S Spider as well at the same time. But other things have kind of taken precedence and I didn't get around to doing anything with this car. I already have a fully restored Innocenti Spider. So since I wasn't going to be driving this one, I put it up on the shelf, keep it safe and keep it out of the way so that I can get other things done. Below the Innocenti Spider, is an MG Midget. This car is actually pretty complete. The drivetrain is there. As you can see, it's wearing a few uh, restored random Sprite wheels or Midget wheels. 
I don't remember where this car came from. I don't even remember if I paid anything for it. I put it up there on the shelf when the shelves were built. So it has been sitting there for a long time, at least eight years. I have thought if anyone wants to see a challenge between me and Kevin over at Junkyard Digs, I could get this car running and we could have some sort of MG Midget challenge. His car is in pretty similar condition to this one. And I don't think it would take me very long to get this one to run. So if you guys think that sounds like a good idea, maybe I could see if we can make that happen. Below that MG Midget, I have a whole bunch of parts. I could put another car down here, but right now I just need to organize my parts, get this cleared up, and then I can put another car down here. I can't even remember what the last car that I had placed there was, but I do remember at one time I did have a car sitting in there. Probably another MG Midget. Moving down the line is a very last year of the MGB. This MGB has also been upgraded with some performance items. You can see it has a Weber carburetor there. It has an alloy valve cover. I haven't really investigated it to see what else it has. This is a car that maybe someday I will fix up. And if you're wondering what that black pool underneath the MGB is, this is a Sunbeam Alpine engine that has uh, broken through the pallet, tipped over. So I need to do a little cleanup back here. Actually, these are all three Sunbeam Alpine engines here. So above this MGB, I have another MGB. This was a very, very nice car at one time. This was owned by a guy and he made his girlfriend or wife extremely mad. And she went out and filled the car with fireworks and set it on fire. So and when the fire department showed up to put the fire out in this car, they took crowbars and pry bars and they pried the bonnet up. So the bonnet is kind of dented and the tops of the fenders are kind of dented. But as you can see, the wheels are in good shape. There's actually a lot of stuff on this car that's still in really good shape. And the engine did not really make it into the engine bay. So everything inside of there is also in really good shape. I have enough parts around here. I don't think it would take me too long to fix this car up and make it right again. Above the burnt up fireworks MGB, I have a Simca 1100. I got this car for the price of hauling it away. This is a pretty neat little car, but I do not have the drivetrain for it. This is of course a rear engine car. Besides the engine, it's in pretty complete condition and it would make an interesting project, maybe a really interesting repower or possibly a good candidate to convert to electric. Just like the next car we're going to see, these were really popular rally cars. I think it'd be fun to fix this car up and give it that vintage rally look. Behind the Simca, I have a Renault Dauphine. This car is a lot more complete than the Simca is. This car has the drivetrain, although the engine is taken apart. I think it would be fun to give this car a Gordini treatment. Since the engine is disassembled, this might make a good video if anyone wants to see it. I could pull this car down, take a look at the engine, see if it is rebuildable, maybe do something with it. It appears to be in pretty solid shape, and these cars have a pretty good following. Below the Renault is another MGB. As you can see, it's pretty rusty. I'm probably never going to do anything with this car. But this is uh, one of the MGBs that I have not started to throw stuff into. I haven't filled it with parts. I've left it sitting here waiting for a restoration. Probably that will never happen. Someday if I need more room, I might just tear this car down because uh, this is probably better as just a parts car. Well, this car has been sitting here on the shelf since the shelves were built as well. Below the rotten MGB is a uh, Mark I Austin Healey Sprite race car. Because of all the stuff that I have in front of this car, you probably haven't been able to see it in any of my videos before. But right now the engine is out of this car and I have it sitting on the other side of the room. I have a lot of Sprite projects on my hands right now, but resurrecting this race car or converting it over to be a street car might be a great project to show you guys someday. I do have the SCCA logbook for this car. This is the original logbook and it does show when the car was built. This car was originally turned into a race car in 1972. And in the logbook, it lists all the races and the drivers who have driven this car. Behind that race car is a Sunbeam Alpine. This car was sitting out in a cow pasture and I think I bought two Sunbeam Alpines from the owner of this car. And he asked me if I wanted the shell as well. 
he wasn't going to do anything. He was just going to scrap it. And I said, of course I want it. So here it is. Sitting on top of it there is a real original Sunbeam hardtop. I did not get that with this car, but it's a good place to store it. Above this Sunbeam Alpine sits another Sunbeam Alpine. This one is in considerably better shape, does need rocker panels, but I would consider this car something that could be rebuildable. And above that Sunbeam Alpine is another Sunbeam, this time a Sunbeam Tiger. This car is very complete, although it does need a full restoration. So right now it's just sitting up on the shelf and awaiting one. Someday I will get around to this car, and when that happens, I will make some videos for you. If we come around the corner from the three Sunbeams, over here, I do have a Jaguar six cylinder with overdrive transmission hiding underneath this tile. And then on the other side of that is another Sunbeam Tiger. This car needs a lot of work and I have shown this in previous Sunbeam Tiger videos. Above the Tiger sits another Sunbeam Alpine. This is a series five. It does run and drive. I just don't have room on the floor for it. And I have so many other Sunbeams that I probably wouldn't be driving this one anyways. This one is a pretty decent car, so someday I'll pull it down on the shelf and fix it up some more. Above that Series 5 Alpine, I have a Fiat 124. This is an earlier car, which would have the chrome bumpers and not the rubber ones. I do not have the engine for this car. I was given this car uh, for the price of moving it out of their garage. It's also missing the cowl piece in front of the windscreen. I just didn't want to see the car go to the scrap yard because it does have potential to be turned into something. And for those who are wondering, that is not a hard top for a Fiat sitting on there. That's actually a hard top for a Triumph. I'm just storing it up there. It's a good place to keep it out of the way. Behind the Fiat, I have a mini minivan. This is the panel van version of the mini. As you can see, this was the shop truck of the local British mechanic. I think he said he drove this car until one day he got in an accident. At this point, you can't tell where the accident was. I think this damage on the side may have been due to his skid loader. Maybe it was due to the accident at the time, I'm not quite sure. But it is a pretty neat piece of local history, so I'm glad that I saved it from the scrapyard. Below the panel van is a Countryman Woody Wagon. This is the Woody Station Wagon version of the Classic Mini. If you've watched my videos, I have a fully restored version of this car. Since I have another one that runs and drives, I will probably never get around to restoring this car but I also think it would be a shame to send it to the scrapyard. But who knows, maybe I will run into someone someday that wants to tackle this project. Right now, I do not have another car beneath the Countryman. This is where I'm storing a lot of my Triumph parts. This is a lot of Triumph TR3 and TR4 parts. That's a Perkins diesel generator right there though. And then I kind of keep Triumph TR6 parts over here. So I need to get this cleared up so I can put another car down here. Behind all those parts, and behind these military tires, I have a Nissan Z. This is an old race car, but they blew up the original turbo motor. And so I threw a spare Chevrolet V8 that I had sitting around. I have never finished this project. A few of my friends have gone a few years now without doing the racing thing. So this project has been kind of put on hold uh, until there's more interest in racing this car again. And obviously I have a lot more engineering to go to finish this project, but maybe this would be a good project for showing you guys on this week with cars. On the inside, you can see it is still completely full race car inside. It had already been converted to using simple instruments, so it would be no problem getting those to work with the Chevrolet V8. Above the Nissan, I of course have another Sunbeam. This is a Sunbeam Alpine. The front end of this car was sacrificed to save another Sunbeam Alpine that I own. I don't think I have featured that Alpine on any of my videos yet, but I am planning on doing that because it is a pretty interesting car. Above this Alpine is an MGB GT. This is one of four MGB GTs that I bought one day. A somewhat local guy was tearing the engines out of these cars and selling them to other MGB owners that needed them and he was just going to send these cars to the scrapyard. So I went down and I hauled them all back up here. Behind the BGT is an MGB Roadster. This is a pretty early car. It has the full metal dash. This is the earliest MGB that I have ever owned. And because it is such an early car, I think it would be worth restoring someday. 
Beneath the Roadster is another MGB GT. As you can see, I'm either missing the bonnet or I had used the bonnet on another car. I think when the guy was taking the engines out, he had the bonnets off and he just either sold the bonnets or kept them. Beneath this BGT is an earlier BGT. This is my favorite of the BGTs that I got that day. I have sold one of the four already, but this is the one that I definitely want to keep. I do have an MGB engine that I rebuilt in the other room and it's ready to go in this car or any of these other MGBs when I actually have some time to work on them. And for anyone who recognizes this, this is the luggage rack that goes on the roof of my Series 3 Land Rover. But with the rack on it, it will not fit in the garage at my house, so usually I leave it off. I think two or three times now I've gotten home and I forgot that the rack was up there and it just knocked the rack right off the roof of the Land Rover when I tried to pull into the garage. So that was a little tour of the cars that I have up on the shelf, both future projects, parts cars, and cars that I know I'll never do anything with at all. If you have any suggestions on what I should do with any of the cars that you've seen in this video, comment below. And if you want to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button and you'll get notified when I post something new.